Welcome to Celebrating God's Grace, a Women World Leaders podcast. We are so grateful that you're here, and it's a privilege to come to you each Friday with Celebrating God's Grace podcast. We really hope that today's message will touch your heart and your mind, and our prayer is that as your intimacy with God grows, your love for one another will flourish, enabling you to live out a courageous, purpose-driven life. Don't forget to join us each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On Mondays, our CEO, Kimberly Hobbs, interviews women from all over the globe. And our co-CEO, Julie Jenkins, on Wednesdays, and our fabulous Bible teacher, brings us a study of God's Word and its application to our lives. Today, let's look at a verse in the book of Joel. It's a promise. God's Word and Bible is full of promises, thousands of them, and they're for us, not just for those who lived long ago. Joel 2.25 says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. God's promise is to restore the years the locusts have eaten. This is an amazing promise, for some things can be restored. We may lose property. That can be restored. Even relationships can be restored. Money, jobs. We may even think of furniture that we've restored or a house that we've restored. But time? Time cannot be. Haven't we all possibly thought, oh, if I could only go back in time. But those days are forever gone. But here, our God, who does the impossible, is promising just that, the impossible. To give a glimpse of the context of this verse, God's people had experienced the complete destruction of their harvest. An invasion of locusts marched through their crops field by field. The entire country of Israel was affected. God's people in the promised land had been brought down to their knees. How many of us have been where we've been brought to our knees? Devastated. Devastated with worry or concern over family members or loved ones or battles that we face in this life. Sorrow, mourning, loss, hurt. But there's always hope in the Lord. Where are our locust years? Locust years are wasted years, lost years. Years we just can't get back. And it causes us grief, and it comes in lots of variety and different forms. Here are a few just to reflect on. There may be fruitless years. You know, farmers plant seeds and they labor week after week, sometimes only to see no fruit. And some of us can relate to this. All this work that I've done, what did I get out of it? Absolutely nothing. It could be a failed venture, a business venture, could be a failed marriage, could be a child that's left home and is living a very unhealthy lifestyle. And we may feel and reflect on the fact that we had all these efforts that we put in, but it just led to disappointment. Could be loss of ourselves. We sometimes feel we give so much, so much to our families, to our kids, to our career, to our missions even to our church, but we may feel like we lose a part of ourselves. We may even face in this lifetime health challenges or illnesses or major life challenges that just has us reflecting on loss. Where did the time go? Might be loss of love. It could be losing the love of your life or never finding that soulmate that your heart even now yearns for. Years lost where a love of another does not fill our days and our years. Family may move away and we're separated from children and grandchildren and don't even get to experience the love of seeing them regularly 
and being part of their lives, only to depend on technology to see their faces or hear their voices. Selfish years. Some have committed to God but continue to live for self. Some could say that there's been really no real spiritual awakening, the Holy Spirit-filled life. Those lukewarm years, some of us were maybe on fire for God and have become a bit lukewarm. Distractions may come, and many of them are, are good distractions. Family, raising young children, and God understands all of that. But those little distractions that add up and take us away from our time and our study, our first true love. There could even be what we might call misdirected years. Oh, those choices that lead to or did lead to dead ends. We might have had our life all mapped out, dreams set, goals put down on paper to accomplish. But life didn't turn quite out that way as we imagined those empty years and this can happen at any any age oh how those locusts can slip into our fields and eat away at the years of our lives oh and I can relate to this one what about those rebellious years those you know that growing up with so many blessings yet our instinct was to rebel throwing yourself into a life of pleasure, but it only brought pain. And we thought we knew best at the time. And then regret comes in, eventually realizing these years were lost, searching for things we believed would bring us so much happiness, only to know now the years spent were really chasing things that brought temporary happiness, or what we thought was happiness. If we have the blessing of living a long life, We may reflect on our own locust years, but really all Christ-less years are locust years. Years without him are loss. And all years we are not surrendered and seeking him with all our hearts are locust years. But we all have them. But, praise God, we meet and get to know and serve a God who can bless those years. We look forward, not behind, and live in our hope that is our anchor, Jesus Christ. And complete restoration is promised. He will restore. Now, complete restoration doesn't just happen, and it will eventually happen when we're face-to-face with Him. But we can take personal responsibility here and now, and live that John 10.10 abundant life, we can take personal responsibility to enforce this prophecy. Christ can restore lost years by deepening our fellowship with Him, by deepening our relationship with Him. But like Mary, who sat at His feet, and there would have been a lot of people looking on, thinking, what in the world is this woman doing We have to gear up for it. We have to be expectant. We have to sow our seeds because our harvest awaits. For here and now, for the years that we have left, as well as heaven that awaits. So let us keep our eyes and our mind and our heart upon you, Lord, the Restorer, who completely restores, no matter what we've been through, What we're going through, you desire to give us double for our trouble. Help us, God, if it's old attitudes or mindsets that we need to delve into and have a look at. Have you shine that light upon it, Father? Is it unhealthy relationships? Who are we surrounding our time? Who? What people um, are we surrounding our, our time with, giving our time to? We ask you, God, to show us because we know that your heart desires to restore all that we felt that we have lost. And I pray that we will open our hearts to that and receive it. Fill our hearts with the love for you stronger, brighter than it ever could be. Starting today with all of the years 
that we have left that you will bless us with. Multiply our fruitfulness and no matter what comes against us in these earthly years, let us bear fruit that will last, that will be eternal. Spurgeon said God can do more in a year or a day than all of us can do in a lifetime. Amen. Thank you for listening to Women World Leaders Podcast. Join us each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as we explore together God's extravagant love and your courageous purpose. Visit our website at www.womenworldleaders.com. Consider submitting a prayer request. We have a whole team that continues to pray over all of the requests. And check out any upcoming event. And please consider supporting the ministry through prayer or donations. We'd also love to support you in finding your God-given destiny. Check out our quarterly magazine, Voice of Truth. There are several ways to join us online where we come together to pray and meet with women all over the globe where we are taught, inspired, and encouraged. From his heart to yours, we are Women World Leaders. All content is copyrighted by WWL and cannot be used without written consent.